Facing challenges and overcoming setbacks is part of doing business. Whether you have the expertise to survive them or not could mean the difference between success or failure. Welcome to We Are Women, featuring revealing conversations that provide invaluable insights into the success secrets of female masterminds. A must listen for every entrepreneurial woman. Now here's your host, Janine Vosper. Hi, it's Janine Bosper here and welcome to this episode of the We Are Women podcast. Today I have with me Alwyn Altenay. Now Alwyn is a mass media marketing expert. She is known as the media queen. Alwyn is a TV host, a speaker, a photojournalist and author of multiple international best-selling books. So with that, with 38 years, oh my gosh, you haven't been working for 38 years in media, surely Alwyn. <laughs> Her PR company, AA Exposed Media, is the only one she knows of that guarantees results in the mainstream media. She is passionate about inspiring more good news in the mass media. Oh, don't we need good news? And to help decrease depression and suicide rates and lift people's spirits. That is so important, and that's definitely something that we're going to touch on during this chat today. In 2008, she founded Mass Media Tribe Meetup Group and the Global Good News Day, which is run annually on August 8th. Oh, I've got to put that day in my calendar before we get off here. She founded the monthly uh, Good News Challenge in 2020 and has tripled her business during COVID and recently won 2001 BX Print Media and Photography Business of the Year. Yay! Also an animal activist, she founded Animal Action Events in 2007. Oh, yeah, there's a trophy. How cool. Yes, and uh, has run 50 <laughs> annual charity events so far raising awareness, appreciation and respect for all animals. In her spare time, she loves performing in a comedy duo. I did not know this. The Fiddly <laughs> Gigglers, acting, playing ukulele. I can pronounce an ukulele properly. There you ukulele. go. <laughs> Along beach walks and body surfing. Oh, oh, that's very cool. Welcome, old one. There is so much there that we're going to discuss today. Thank you so much, Janine. Thank you. I appreciate it. Old one, you said you started in the media at 10 years old. I have to know more about that. Yes, thank you, Janine. Well, I know I don't look a day over 25. However, I am actually 48. And I was first featured in the media at age 10. And it was actually for table tennis. So I featured in the Manly Daily in Sydney for table tennis. However, leading up to that, I actually had quite a up and down pass, particularly up until my teenage years. It was quite a rocky start. I'm a first generation Australian born in Sydney. I have Greek, Turkish and Ukrainian background. It's an interesting mix. Yes, it is an interesting mix. And yes, I do have some family in the Ukraine right now and they've been, you know, working on fleeing for their lives. So it's definitely a difficult time for some people at the moment. Uh, Being born in Sydney as a first generation Australian, I actually was bullied a lot as a child. I actually never felt I belonged anywhere. I didn't feel I belonged at school. I didn't feel I belonged at home. I had very strict European parents. And while they were very loving, I actually felt very much like a misfit growing up. And my dad used to watch the news every single night growing up. He would watch not just one channel of news, he would watch multiple news channels. So two hours of mostly negative news Mm. every night. I remember one night as a six-year-old, so upset by what I saw on the news that I was literally in tears and I went to my dad just bawling my eyes out and I said, why is the world so cruel? Why are people like this? And he said, darling, he hugged me. He said, that's just how the world is. Now, I know many years later, having done a lot of personal development, having seen other sides of the world, of course, there's a lot of positive things going on in the world too. However, if Mm. we believe everything we see in the mainstream media, we will potentially end up depressed and suicidal. And what happened with me growing up with negative news, uh, another thing too, with my dad saying anger is danger, I actually internalized my anger. And I felt very isolated, right? Yeah, yeah, internalize the anger. And and as an eight-year-old, my dad introduced me to table tennis. 
And one way I externalized my anger was playing table tennis. And I used to just beat the hell out of the ball. I had this killer forehand smash. (laughs) And before too long, I became a very good table tennis player. Although I was still very much, I felt like a misfit. I didn't feel seen or heard. I got my anger out with table tennis, became very good at it. And at 10 years of age, we had a journalist and photographer from the Manly Daily that came to our garage in North Bay Gala where we had a table. Mm -hmm. And I remember the photographer getting up on a ladder, looking down at me. I had my bat and ball at the table. I looked up at this photographer from the Manly Daily and I thought, wow, that looks like a really fun thing to do. I'd love to do something like that one day. And that was really where my curiosity for the media started. And then at 11 years of age, featured in in Cartoon Connection on... um, on Agro's Cartoon Connection on Channel 7. Mm -hmm. And that was also a very daunting experience as an 11-year-old because I remember being in the Sydney studio. It was a massive camera in the studio, about 30 people there. And the TV host turned to me and said, Aldwin, don't think of the 2 million people watching this right now. (laughs) And so clearly (laughs) all I could do was think about the 2 million people. Absolutely. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so all I could do as I looked at this this camera was the 2 million people watching me right now. I totally froze. It was the worst interview ever. However, what they did have in the studio and something that the media love is they want to not just educate people but entertain people. They had a table tennis table behind us and my brother and I got on the table tennis table and we just went forehand to forehand. We just started practicing just like we normally have a have a warm-up, forehand to forehand. We kept that ball going across the table and they wow, that wowed them. They were like, oh, my goodness, how do you do that? They got the clapping machine on. They thought it was fantastic. And I, I thought, I'm going to do it. I'm going to focus on this ball rather than then look at that camera where there's 2 million people, right? Mm. So it was interesting because we didn't think we were doing anything special. We were just warming up, but the media loved it because they hadn't seen that happen before. They hadn't seen people keep a ball on the table past a few shots, you know? And this is the thing is that often people are so close to their genius that they don't realize what their genius is, you know? That's, it, that's a great a, point. Fascinating. And, and then I, from there I went on and did a radio yeah. show at, at Radio Manly Warringah. I used to write aggressive poetry too. That was another way I got rid of my anger was writing, writing poetry is show on Radio Manly Ringa okay. and then went on and did work experience at the Manly Daily and then worked in the media. I, I, that's a, I mean, that's really exciting for a child. I can't imagine how uh, how you would have felt. That would have been a great deal of fun. I remember I went on a one of the local places had the kids' shows that they recorded as well and I can't remember what it was. It was a very long time ago. We're talking, you know, 55 years ago. But oh. it, was, it was a heap of fun as a child doing that. So, I, you know, that's a next level up. That would have been exciting. Yes. And seeing, you know, the, that having that experience, that prompted you then to go, go into media? That was, that, that was absolutely the catalyst? Well, at 10 years of age, that's where my interest sparked with looking at how the journalist operated, how the photographer operated. I became very curious about behind the scenes with the media because I was watching a lot of media, obviously watching TV every day with my dad and was always fascinated by the media and loved watching TV as a kid. And then at 11 years of age, being on Cartoon Connection as well, that also then reignited Uh, my interest for it so I was very curious about it and then doing a radio show at 13 I guess that was pretty game of me to step forward as a 13 year old and do a poetry show Um, so I had some confidence I guess that came with the table tennis and I had this rebellious nature you know my dad was very strict and whatever he said to do I did the opposite there from about the age of 13 Uh, and that ended up leading to at 15 years of age he actually kicked me out of the house and you know we think the grass is greener on the other side and I moved into a crazy household in Manly interestingly where I was with a a drummer whose mum was an alcoholic his sister was dealing drugs Uh, and in that environment Uh, Six months into that environment, I actually had a turning point and that was where I saw my boyfriend and my best friend sleeping with each other in front of me. And I remember the Pretenders Don't Get Me Wrong song was playing on the turntable at the time. It was the record record days. And I was so devastated by that. I called my mum in tears and I said, I can't handle this anymore. And she said, come home. And I changed my environment from that point. I was going to Mossman High School and I actually went from ducks of my primary school to failing everything in year 11 in that environment Mm. and then went back home. And for year 12, I then studied really hard and got into a media degree. 
at Forest High School. Wow. Uh, from Mossman High School to Forest High School, worked really hard. The only course that interested me out of everything on offer was for my HSC, because of course at 18 years of age, I said, what do you want to do for the rest of your life? And the mm-hmm. only thing was media. And what I loved about the media degree is they were doing a bit of radio, a bit of film, a bit of photography. And I thought by the end of that course, I'll know what I want to do in the media, right? I didn't know where exactly in the media, but I loved the whole I, ha- I love the power of the media to be able to impact change. And I guess th- I saw the change that that had on me and how it impacted my life. And I love the fact that that we could actually share messages that we were passionate about through the media. So then doing a three-year media degree, while there, there was a job going as editor of the university newspaper, which was Curio. I got into Canberra University and this position I applied for three times before I actually got the job as editor. And what I loved about that, it was freedom of information. It was free press. And one of the very first stories I wrote was an anti-duck shooting story. I could not believe that in Australia we were shooting ducks for fun. And when I looked into how cruel that was with the lead bullets, they weren't dying quickly, et cetera, I wrote a story about it. And the headline we had at the time was go and get ducked. It was in your face, uni press, you know, and then I did a story about battery farming of chickens, about the environment, about recycling, whatever it was that I that I saw that angered me in some way, um, female circumcision, I, I would write about it. And then that then led to over 20 years of working in the media as a, a photojournalist primarily. I've worked in many different positions, but mainly as a photojournalist and as a journalist with TV, radio and print. And then I started my own business in 2002 and, and did a lot of photography work initially uh, back in the in the film days when you had to know how to take a photo, right? Did, did, I did thousands of photos, lots of different events. So I became very well known on the Gold Coast as a photographer while I was working as a journalist at the Gold Coast Sun. And then when I left that position in 2005, it evolved into a media business. And ever since that, now things have been going from strength to strength. And I can't see myself ever working for anyone ever again full time. It's know, quite I've a done... different space, isn't it, Alwyn, when, when, you, yes. when you're working for yourself and can have that flexibility and, and choose your own hours. I know a lot of the people listening do exactly that, but they want to be able to do it successfully. That's the point, isn't it? And yes. be able to create, because that's what we want to do. And I can see with everything that you do is we want to not just earn a living, but we want to make an impact. And if yes. the, the, the better living we can make, the more be, better impact that we can have on the things that are important to us. Yes. And that's taken some work. Let me tell you, Janine. I mean, I did have depression for many years. I internalized my anger. Uh, As I said, my dad said anger is danger. And so I internalized it. And I also have had four friends who've taken their own lives by the age of 45. So something very close to my heart where I'm really passionate now about inspiring more truth and good news in the world Mm -hmm. and helping to lift the energy and the consciousness on the planet, which I think we so need right now. However, in that journey, I remember once it was 2005, I was in a National College of Business event and the, the director at the time, John Maley, he said, how much can you earn a week if you're working from here down? If you're just if you're just using your body, how much can you earn a week? So you have to, because people are listening, so don't just, yeah, be mindful. It's not just video. So from here down, from the neck down. Oh, sure. From, <laughs> oh, yes, from the neck down. From the yeah. neck down, how much can you earn? And people said, oh, maybe 1500 2000 a week. And he said, how much can you earn? if you're working from the neck up, if you're using your brain. And people said, oh, well, it's infinite. And he said, well, wouldn't it make sense then that you invest 10% of your income in your education, your personal development? And so that made a hell of a lot of sense for me. That was another turning point in my life. And from 2005 onwards, I invested over, I've invested over $500,000 in my personal development, in business development. And all of that has helped shape me to who I am today. And it's, and it's been a bumpy ride, let me tell you. It's been a very up and down ride. However, you know, the main thing is, is to stay on path and on purpose. And that's something now I'm at a really great point in my life where I feel that I am on path and on purpose. And in fact, more so since COVID, it's like I've had a rocket up my backside to help share more truth and good news and lift the energy out there at the moment. Yeah. And, and that is such an important factor to be able to, and, and look, people, I know they poo poo me when I say is speaking your truth or living your truth, but it just makes your life so simple when you do. Yes. It, you, you just, and that's part of the media thing, isn't it? Coming across 
as you are who you are. But I just want to go back on that. How much can you earn from the head up in investment? I'm the same as you. I have invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in me, in me. And yes. me being able to then help so many other people. And you know, I was working with some people today and and they've just gone, oh my goodness, you're just giving me so much clarity. And oh, if I can do that every single day of the week because of what I've learned and that, but again, you have to invest in yourself and and not just for business, but that emotional investment and to raise your spirit and to go looking for something that raises your spirit on a daily basis is so important, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. And really working also on all areas of life, because often in business, we can get very carried away with business. And I know I've been quite, I would say a workaholic. I have been for most of my life. I've been a very much a high achiever. Uh, and I've also had a bit of bright, shiny object syndrome, and I've gone also from course to course, uh, also, you know, networking and having a great time. However, you know, lately I've been a lot more focused, I would say, with my efforts when it comes to personal development. And, you know, I still invest a hell of a lot in myself constantly working on the mental, emotional, physical, spiritual aspects of life. Because if, you know, if your relationships aren't working, for example, it's going to affect your business. And, you know, making time for health, making time for those big rock items for self-care, for family, for friends, for adventures, etc. right? There's, there's, you know, there's lots to be conscious of when it comes to having a balanced life. And we're never going to have a completely balanced life in all areas. No. It's right? different at every age what balance looks like. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, but if, as you said, those big rocks, and people might not know what that means, but, you know, the... Well, you can explain the big rocks. It's you brought that up, it, but it makes a difference, doesn't it? Making it important for yeah. the big important things in life first, and yes. then adding all the peripherals. But exactly. Yeah, yeah. Filling exactly. a jar full of those big rocks first. That's right. Because if you put all the small rocks in first, all the little things, you won't be able to actually fit the big rocks in. And Stephen Covey did a great video of this that you'll find on YouTube, where you'll actually see different examples of this. Where if you have the the two jars, you put all the little rocks in, the big rocks will not fit. If you put the big rocks in first, then pull all the little little rocks in, it all fits into the jar. Mm. And it's a great analogy for you know what are the most important things in life, and also. You you know, considering the 80 20 rule considering Pareto's principle of what is the 20 percent that you're putting your effort in that's bringing you 80 percent of the result with everything in life and the, that 20 percent could be the big rocks right you put your efforts mm. into the big rocks and then everything else will fall into place yeah but, so so making the time for that is so important and you know I've I've you know my background working in the media it's been a very high adrenaline kind of lifestyle it's been you know, go, 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 and then crash, right? Go, 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 crash, right? And so this is where I've had the depression. I've had some really low moments because often I'm out here and, you know, just going like crazy and then my body tells me to slow down usually is how it goes. If, I, if I'm if i overdoing it and if I'm not taking the time for the self-care for things like yoga and meditation, which I've really come to value more so in the last few years, I've been doing a lot of yoga and meditation and that's made the world of difference for me and making time for the beach and, and for things like that, you know, comedy, making time to laugh, you know, whatever, however that looks for you is so important to, to raise the vibration. If I haven't made time for those things, my body soon tells me. And, you know, as they, as they say, you either get hit with a feather, a brick or a Mack truck right? When we get the warnings from the universe, right? You get the little warning signs. I always and- ask for the feathers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I go, thank you very much. I've got it. Yes. Yes, exactly. And yeah. so, so important because a third of people die by the age of 65, you know, and that goes pretty damn quick. You know, life just flies by. Now I'm not quite 65 yet, but you know, like that's I've a, been that's, see- a, that's an incredible number. I, is that, yes. Is that Western society or is that worldwide because there'd be a lot of youth deaths? They're just... That's a, that's a general worldwide stat okay. that I heard a while ago, although I have heard also since COVID we've had four times the amount of suicide rates as well. So normally about a million people a year take their lives worldwide. During COVID now, the last two years has been four times that rate. Wow. So yeah. I would say even but, more so now with COVID, I've been seeing 50-year-olds drop off having heart attacks and, you know, people unexpected. Shane Warne we saw, mm, you know, and I, mm. I've had several friends have just died out of the blue of things such as heart attacks in the early 50s. Yeah, yeah, and, and that 
is I've always been one. I plan for tomorrow, but I live for today. That's mm. just always been my um, kudos. And I, I'm well. I'm well over that 55, so that's very good. Hit that. Done that. Got the badge. <laughs> <laughs> you look amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you. The, and and always created the lifestyle, the next lifestyle that I wanted to create. So when you've got children at home and you're busy with that when they're younger, it's it's that's your priorities. And so that was the kids' sports and being with them and as well as fitting in with work and whatever. That mm. that was the, that was the big things was the the sports particularly for for our family with the two boys. But you have to spend that time. It's, it's, you don't get it back. This is, you, you don't yes. get it back. And that's, it's so important to, you know, we're not, you know, we're not talking media here, but this is such an important thing on, uh, that you, I can see that's so important to you as well, that yes. we don't get this time back. That one, and your health, without a doubt, your health is the most important priority in your life without good health you can't support the family without good health you you can't enjoy what you do if you haven't got health so whatever you're doing out there focus on eating well what they should have been telling us to do over the last two years eating healthfully get outside enjoy nature be with people that you love move the body however that looks like for you and just that raises your spirit, doesn't it? Just to be able to yes. do all of that, it, def- it raises your vibration. It raises the spirit. Absolutely. And if we don't fill our own cups up, we can't help other people with the overflow. Mm. Right? And so important to nurture ourselves, to love ourselves. And, you know, as they say, hurt people hurt people. And there are a lot of people hurting out there right now. Yeah. And often people can hurt themselves. I was actually very self-destructive growing up. I actually had, you know, when I was being rebellious, I was also drinking a lot, smoking a lot. I didn't like myself. I didn't want to be here. I didn't like the world. I was angry with myself, angry with the world. And I took it out on myself. And this, a lot of people do this subconsciously. They don't even realize they're nasty to themselves. The conversations we have in our head, you know, what do you say to yourself when you're looking at yourself in the mirror? Mm. You know, do you say, do you say, I love you? I truly, truly love you. I appreciate you. Or do you say, oh, gee, you're getting old or a few more gray hairs there. Oh my goodness. Look at those wrinkles. You know, what, what, what are you saying to yourself? <laughs> <in the laughs> I get on Zoom and put the filters on. I go, wow, yeah. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it is it is a, that is a really good question and I, I mean and that whole putting yourself first when it comes to your own business is so important when you are building a business isn't it and getting the media and doing what you need to be doing and pri- so what would be suggestions of people prioritizing things when they're um, in the you know their business their media or uh, Apart from that, you know, keeping that positive space and looking for positive stories and any recommendations for people to, you know, get some promotion and and, and have yeah. that confidence to do that as you did as a 10-year-old. Yes, yes. Well, the confidence part, that takes some work, okay? That is about owning your power. And that's not something generally that will come overnight for people. You know, I work with a lot of clients to help overcome their fears. Mm. And sometimes it takes them 15 years. In fact, one person I, I know, I've known for 15 years recently came forward and said, I'm now ready to come and work with you. Wow. And, you know, this can happen sometimes, you know, that, that people sort of delay or they say, I'm not ready yet, and they procrastinate and they put it off. But the fact is you only need to know 10% more than someone else to actually be able to teach something and to put yourself out as an expert. And the number one thing that stops people is this imposter syndrome, is this I'm not good enough or I don't have enough to share and all these sort of negative conversations. So actually the personal development part of this is 80%, I would say, of anything we do is actually the personal development, is actually having that faith, doing that inner work, clearing those blockages, you know, which is not something I'm, I'm not an expert at clearing blockages. I've worked with a lot of experts on clearing my own blockages. And, you know, we we all have some version of I'm not good enough, I don't belong, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. But these negative sort of subconscious thoughts that that are there And the more personal development I've done over the years, I've realized that I notice those conversations when they come up because they still do come up even after all the work I've done. There's still occasionally the odd negative conversation will come up 
and I'll say thank you for sharing and move on. So now I'm able to move on a lot quicker than I have in the past. In the past, when I've had depression, I've been in really low states and I've had a few near-death experiences as well. When I've been in those places in the past, before I did the personal development, those situations would last for months at a time. I would be down for, say, three months. I'd be out not wanting to see anyone, just not wanting to get out of bed, you know, just really low states. Um, so later in life, the more work I've done on myself, I've been able to pull myself out of those out of those situations. So, so the belief in yourself, that self-worth, self-value, and actually allowing yourself to step up, that really is the very first place to start. There's actually just getting, you know, I do have a great story to share. And in fact, your X factor is your story, right? If you've had any down points in life, which as a human being, it'd be surprising if you haven't had some low points in life, right? As a roller coaster ride of life, you've had any low points in life, you've had any breakdowns whatsoever, there'll be a story right there that you can share with the media. So when it comes to putting your message out to the media, I'll give you three main points today for our, uh, for our people here today. Three main things to consider when you want to get some media coverage. The very first place is to look at your product. What is your product, your service or message that you want to promote? Now, being an entrepreneur, you may have many products and services that you have going at the one time, right? Mm. So look at what is the one thing that's most important right now and if, if it's finances that you want, if you want more money coming in, then consider what is it that you're doing right now or offering right now that's bringing you 80% of your income for the least amount of effort. Have a look at whatever that thing is and then let's look at what the story is behind that thing. What is the story behind whatever it is you want to promote? And how does whatever it is you want to promote, how is that relevant to the wider community? So get very clear on what it is you want to promote, yeah. what is your story behind it, and how is this relevant to the wider community? So that is your product. The next thing is then your package. How do you then package that up? Now, packaging your message up for, uh, for journalists is a very different way to packaging your message up for anything else, okay? It's, it's a very specific way to package your message up. Now, the first thing you'll need in your package is a press release. Now, you can get publicity without a press release, but you will increase the chances of a journalist getting the facts wrong. They are very busy people. There's a five-year burnout with journalists. So having a well-written press release that's written like a journalist would write it with a good angle is really, really important. The next part of that is having good visuals, having good photos or visuals. Even with radio now, they put their stories up on, on their social media and up on their website. So some good visuals is important. And the next thing is your pitch. How do you then pitch that? You've got about 45 seconds to get your pitch across to journalists. They're very, very busy. They're snappy. If you don't pitch effectively, you will be wasting their time and you'll be burning contacts. Yeah. Whereas if yeah. you build contacts by packaging up what you do in the correct way, then they're going to love you and they will potentially come back to you looking for more content from you. And then the third... The Actually, third that's one, what I found too, is once you've given content, yeah. that they'll, they'll approach you yes. for more. Because, that's right. Yeah, they've got to fill pages, but they want exactly. to know that it's of the high value. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Journalists are looking for stories every single day. They need new stories. So if you have a relevant story for that particular journalist that's relevant for their media outlet... Mm. then they will absolutely love you and they will come back to you looking for more content. And mm. the, the third P here, the third uh, tip I'll give is around profit. How do you then make the most of that publicity once you get the publicity? A lot of people get publicity, they don't do anything with it. You know, mm. you can get photos, for example, of what you're doing. You can share that on social media. You can tag the reporter, tag the media outlet. You can put stories up on your websites you can make sure you get the you know the mp4s mp3s get clippings etc there's lots of ways you can leverage the media that you get you can use the logos in your marketing once you've appeared once on tv for example you can say as seen on tv and you don't need to smuggle drugs out of bali to do that okay not to do anything illegal preferably not no <laughs> That's right. There's lots of ways you can Hasn't get there a lot of stories like that with, uh, in the last couple of years, has there, with people not, no, not going no. and travelling? Yes, yes, true, true. Yeah. That's true. Mm. Yeah, so lots of opportunity out there. And there are literally millions of media outlets. Like we're at a time now, I mean, even with podcasts alone, like 2018 we had 500,000 podcasts worldwide. Now we have over 2.2 million podcasts. And now what we've got also with traditional media, with traditional TV, radio and news outlets, now they all have massive social media followings. They all have their websites they're sharing stories on. So it really is a mass media world now because journalists are going to be Googling you. And what are they going to find are you googlicious 
right? Are you Google? Googleicious. Oh, I love that. <laughs> it's a great term, isn't it? I, might, I actually use that as the headline for the, the podcast on here. <laughs> <laughs> no, although we've covered more things on that. But yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that, that's media. a point, isn't it? That that's yeah. that, and look, that, you know, some of the clients I'm working with at the moment are really starting from basics. They've got nothing. You know, I I, I teach some social media and, and particularly LinkedIn is one, but I'm not a LinkedIn aficionado. But I can get people from the basics to you know a, a reasonable level quite easily and quickly because there's a sales conversation in everything. Because that's mm. my expertise is the sales conversation. It's but it, but it's yes. I, you know it's something I hadn't thought of doing until someone asked me. And well, of course I can. Okay, here we go. Teach this, and then all of a sudden you can teach it, and it's it's really becomes profitable doing so. You know? Yes, yes, it's, it's uh, absolutely yeah massive yeah. potential. So yeah, I, I can see all of this. You know. Um, your enthusiasm and your your passion for for the media stuff and helping people get promoted. What's a story of somebody that um, got some amazing publicity and that you've worked with? Sure. Okay, I'll share the story of Michelle Patterson. Michelle Patterson is a women's empowerment coach here on the Gold Coast, and she came to me wanting publicity a few years ago. And we sat down, we did an in-depth media consultation, and she wanted to promote her empowering women courses that were coming up. And she had also adopted a child out against her will when she was 16 years of age. So I was learning more about her personal story, et cetera. And right at the end of the consultation, after several hours, she said, oh, I think it's time now to come out about my story about how I had to, I was forced to adopt my child out when I was 16 years of age, because back then it was seen as a big shame back in the 50s to actually have a child at 16, not being married. And she lived in country New South Wales at the time. So I said, yes, absolutely, come out with that story. So we put a press release out saying, mother opens up on secret forced adoption after 30 years and sent that press release out to a whole lot of media and we were inundated with requests for this story. And we ended up negotiating with Women's Day magazine for an exclusive story on this and they ended up paying thousands of dollars for the story and it ended up being a two-page spread in Women's Women's Day magazine, it reached 1.6 million viewers and the publicity value of that was $300,000 for the two pages. Plus it had a link to her business website in the story. In fact, in the second paragraph, the end of this, in the second column, end of the second paragraph was her business website, even though she shared her personal story. So that's just one example of someone who was a coach here in Labrador on the Gold Coast who was unknown who then pack, we packaged that up effectively and and two-page spread, massive exposure, and forever she can say as seen in Women's Day magazine now. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's really great to hear. It's, it's interesting because I dig down for people's stories for when they're speaking on stage or with your dad, that there's more to it. That, and people are, haven't had anything dramatic happen or haven't had anything happen, which, is, you know, you, you do come across people, but every day there's a little story. You know, to get yes. the big stories is wow, but it can take hours, and they'll be going. There's nothing there. There's nothing there, and then you start, and all of a sudden, this things come through. And I know I worked with a client, and she was selling isogenics, so it's multi-level marketing. And she said, uh-huh. "Oh, I've just got nothing that sets me apart. There's absolutely nothing. Nothing's happened. Nothing done." And then we're talking about travel and and she said, oh, she's on TripAdvisor. She had over 10,000 fans on TripAdvisor. I've gone, I didn't know you could have fans on TripAdvisor. And it's because she does all these hiking things. And, oh. and it was just, I've got a pitch for you. Here we go. <laughs> because it would fit it in with this healthy thing, food thing that she was promoting and what she does. And, and, and people don't realise the potential of what they've got, do they, Alwyn? No, because they're too close to their story. They yeah. don't realise the gems of their story. And, you, and this is another big 
mistake people make, I believe, is that they compare themselves to others. Your yeah. story is unique to you and there will absolutely be some gems of your story, but often we're just too close to it. We just don't see. And this is where working with experts to actually help draw those gems out can make the world of difference when it comes to how you pitch your media and how you get yeah. yourself out there. And, you, you know, your X factor is your story. I keep saying there's a reason you attract everything into your life that you do. And even though you may not be seeing it, I can guarantee there will be a story there for everybody. And yeah. if you, and if you and if you don't believe that, then come and see Janine or see me. And we'll find that story. <laughs> oh, yours, yours is mine's to get the little pitch right, you know, and, and, the, and yes. the marketing. But yours is a lot more involved, and and you know, to get yours is to get millions of people interested or the other, you know, in what you have to say as well. So just sort of ra- rounding up, I, I, uh, you know, we've covered so much, and that whole positive good news thing. I just want to visit that very quickly again and that good news day on august 8th so tell me about yes. that before we yes yeah. so up. i started the the world's first good news day on the 8th of the 8th 18 i actually started after my fourth friend suicided and i thought we need more good news and my my little niece she was born on the 8th of the 8th 08 so it was also celebrating her 10th birthday And that was really to celebrate good news on that day. And then now since COVID, I also launched a monthly global good news challenge, which everyone can get involved with for free. Uh, All the details are pinned to the top of the global good news challenge Facebook page. And the whole idea is that we share more gratitude to not just lift our own energy, gratitude and good news, lift our own energy, but lift the energy of those around us. So it's a very simple Facebook live challenge, which starts on the first Monday of every month. It goes for as many days as whatever number month it is. So we've just finished March, the three-day challenge. We've now got a four-day challenge starting next week in for April, and then we'll have a five-day one for May, et cetera. And what happens is people just do a Facebook Live. They just share their name, what they do, three things they're grateful for, and a piece of good news. And the good news could be something about their business, about a client, about something they've seen on a good news site online. And there are many good news sites online, as much as we see a lot of negative news in mainstream media. You know, we have Good News Network, Sunny Skies News, news news.com.au has a good news section. So lots of good news out there people can also use. Uh, And then as long as they hashtag Global Good News Challenge on their live that they do then we'll then find that we'll then also share it for free into our loving life group that goes to 2000 people we'll share it onto the global good news challenge facebook page so we encourage people to do this on their profile as i say all the details are there in the global good news challenge facebook page pinned to the top you'll see all the details and people can reach out and it's amazing a lot of people do this in about one to three minutes very short ones usually and it's amazing how good you feel when you're actually speaking gratitude out when you speak about three things you're grateful for it's amazing it just shifts your whole vibration and anyone who sees that you're shifting their vibration as well so the whole idea is the ripple effect of good news will lift the energy and hopefully help save some lives out there because now more than ever people need inspiration they need connection they need hope they need something to have hope for you know so I I think it's our duty now and our and I believe to really lift the energy do our best to be the best version of ourselves because there's so much we can't control out there in the world and if you worry about what's going on in the world if you worry about the COVIDs and the Ukraine Russia and the floods and if you keep worrying about all that stuff you're never going to get anywhere we can only control how we're going to respond to whatever's going on in the world and that's something that we can all take control of and we can still have an extraordinary life regardless of what's going on around us yeah no no really really great advice and we can do not what your father did but we can turn off all the mainstream media and although yes. we're talking about getting media and publicity but the it's the, the news it's- yes exactly well there's lots of positive mm. uh, stories out there and every negative can also be turned into a positive so there's still like millions of, of media out there where you can share good news stories and even the mainstream media have good news sections you'll mm. find on their websites channel 7 channel 9 and there are good news sections it's just not mm. the first thing people hear usually yeah so yes. i always recommend question everything you're seeing in the mainstream media there's definitely a lot of media programming going on and yeah. when people are in fear they are easily controlled and you know the powers that be don't like the rebels they don't like the entrepreneurs and necessarily because we are challenging the status quo we're challenging the beliefs you know why do we believe what we believe i strongly recommend for those who are open to questioning what's going on in the world to watch the thrive documentaries there's two amazing free documentaries online called thrive and also out of shadows is a very powerful documentary about how we have come to believe what we believe through the mainstream media programming that happens yeah okay now that's great too 
The, I always ask for three takeaway points, and I think you've just covered the, the takeaway points that you're going to have, were you, or there anything else that you want to add with that? Yeah, I, I really want to inspire people to, you know, if you're ready, if you, what, you're watching, listening to this right now, if you feel there's something in you, something greater in you, that needs to be shared with the world and you've maybe been sitting on something and you're thinking, you know, watching all these other people get media coverage in your industry and you're not out there getting that coverage. I encourage you that perhaps it's time to step up. And if you feel it's time that you were seen, heard and known, and you're actually paid more for, for what you do and you actually attract opportunities to yourself, attract clients to yourself rather than push marketing all the time. You can attract and magnetize more clients, more opportunities and a greater experience of life when you step up. And, and there's always going to be people that are going to love you and hate you regardless of what you do, right? So it is going to take some resilience on your part. However, I do recommend if that's you, if you're ready to step up, then I encourage you to do that because because if not, you could potentially be one of these people who dies with the music in you. And the number, number one regret of the dying is living a life not true to yourself, right? So ideally, my wish for you is that you do live a life that you love. And from this point forward, you can't control what's happened in the past. This point forward, what are you going to do to impact your future, to have a greater experience of life for yourself? And that will in turn impact your family, your friends, your community, your clients around you, the world at large. The more you lift your energy and you step up with your message through the mass media, the more you will impact the world and the, and the more fame, fortune, freedom you will have and you will leave a legacy with every single media spot. And one of my favourite quotes, Janine, is the Gandhi quote, be the change you wish to see in the world. And I always say to people, shine bright and light up all those around you. Oh, that's, that's absolutely wonderful um, motivation for people there, Aldwin, and, and yes, I love those quotes as well. It's a great place to finish. And I, I truly believe that people are listening to this and going to be inspired to do all of that. How can people get in touch with you? I know you've covered a few links as we've been going through, but what's the best way for people to get in touch with you? Thank you, Janine. Well, all my links are at linktree forward slash Aldwin. So L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E forward slash Aldwin. And if anyone wants to book a connection and clarity call with me, they can do that there. We've got lots of ongoing events on how to get free publicity. We've got masterclasses, et cetera. So everything's in there, all my social media links, linktree forward slash Aldwin. And they'll also be on the show notes as well. So you'll be able to, everyone will be able to find them there. Thank you so much for that, Aldwin. And we, listening now, you might see there's a couple of jumps throughout. We had quite a few little glitches with the, the internet, but all good. Yes. And um, it went really well. Great information. I really appreciate your time. Thank you, Janine. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me on your show. And it's been such a pleasure. I love your work. And I'm sure, you know, your, your women that, that listen to this are also extraordinary and are here for a reason, listening to this for a reason. So, so great to connect with you and look forward to connecting some more. Thank, thank you very much. And that's another episode of the We Are Women podcast. I am Janine Bosby, your host. Remember, you can jump on and leave a five-star review if you love what you've seen. You can also book a strategy call if you're wondering. So if, as the people that listen to this all the time know that I speak to a whole lot of amazing people. And if I can't help you, then I can recommend people like Aldwin who definitely can. So jump onto janinebosper.com and book a strategy call. I'd love to know what you're thinking and feeling and how I might be able to help with you. I look forward to you joining us on the next episode of the We Are Women podcast. Bye-bye for now. Bye for now. So, do you feel stuck in a rut in business? Visit speechperfect.com.au and download Janine's free ebook to avoid the five most common stumbling blocks women face in business. It's jam packed full of tips to overcome the barriers that could be holding you back from the success that you dream your business will be. We would love you to leave a review of today's episode and share this podcast with other women in need of entrepreneurial inspiration. Subscribe to the next episode now and join the We Are Women community.